This video is brought to you by The Wandering Tavern, the system agnostic TTRPG setting whose Kickstarter campaign is live now from the same creative team that brought you Sky Zephyrs. The Wandering Tavern is a 150-page traveler's guide to an incredibly immersive floating TTRPG setting. How awesome is that? It's also absolutely packed with 15 giant battle maps, 33 NPCs, 30 plot hooks, 6 new plug-and-play Zephyrs, and tons of magical items, illegal trades, downtime games, unique mechanics, and just so much more. Whether you're starting a fresh campaign or have an already established world, The Wandering Tavern is designed to fit seamlessly into your games. They've even been hard at work on their own custom airship builder application for you to use to create your own airships exactly the way you want them and to automatically generate a custom stat block for your ship. They absolutely crushed their initial goals and are now pushing to hit some of their stretch goals, so go support The Wandering Tavern now on Kickstarter using my link in the description or the pinned comment below. It didn't even take one full month, but the team behind Daggerheart has already released their first updated version of the public playtest, now version 1.3. This update is significant, with tons of quality of life improvements, balance adjustments, rules clarifications, and additional guidance for both players and GMs. It's really nice to see such a quick turnaround on the playtest, and especially considering that it seems to have actioned a lot of the feedback from the community, including things that I had mentioned in my previous Daggerheart videos. The thing is though, that Daggerheart playtest 1.3 3 has not fixed one of its core issues that I see within the combat system, and I think it might have actually made it a little bit worse. I'm talking about damage thresholds and armor. The way that damage mechanically functions is still the same. Essentially, when you take damage, you compare the number rolled against your damage thresholds and take an amount of hit points that corresponds to the relevant threshold. For example, if an enemy deals 7 damage to you, you compare it to your damage thresholds. Say your major damage threshold is 7, then you would mark 2 hit points. This, like I said, hasn't changed. What has changed are the thresholds themselves, what happens on low damage attacks, and how armor has been balanced. Let's get into it. Hey, I'm currently on a quest to hit 10,000 subscribers by the time that the revised 2024 D&D books release in September. So if you like what I do and want to help me reach that goal, a sub to the channel would really mean a lot. Shout out to all my members as usual, Julian in the champion tier, Jackal3 and Jumpy Sonic Bear in the hero tier, and Julio, SirenXY, BrainLeborks, and Nathan, my newest member in the warrior tier. Thank you all so much for your continued support, I really appreciate it. Go ahead and click the join button if you want to help support me for as little as $1 per month to get access to things like early videos, priority replies in the comments, and just so much more. Thanks. Firstly, damage thresholds. They have been completely rebalanced across the board. Every class has had their damage thresholds changed, mainly because you no longer take stress for damage that is between 0 and your minor threshold. Previously, if your minor threshold was 4 and you took 2 damage, you would mark a stress instead of actually marking hit points. This is no longer the case. Every class now has their new minor damage threshold starting at 1. This functionally means that stress has been completely removed from the damage equation. You're either marking hit points or you aren't. From a functionality and ease of use perspective, I like this change. It makes one less thing to have to consider during the already somewhat clunky process of calculating damage during combat. I've mentioned in previous videos how this process does feel a bit awkward to run through in the midst of battle. I mean, it's not like it's that hard, but it feels at odds with the design philosophy of the game itself. In any case, this creates one less step and consideration to the calculation overall, which I think is a step in the right direction. It also allows stress to be freed up so it can be continued to be used as more of a resource. While I think that removing stress from damage considerations was a good move, there is a pretty significant implication to the shifting of damage thresholds and the current balance of armor as it exists in Playtest 1.3. Since everyone's minor damage threshold has been moved down to 1, the only difference between whether two otherwise identical characters take damage is their evasion score, which is essentially armor class in Dungeons & Dragons. The thing about Daggerheart though is that how hard you are to hit, your evasion score is mostly not affected by your armor, but rather by your class, and in the game, most classes just have low scores to begin with. A wizard has an evasion score of 8, while a warrior has a base evasion of 10. This is not nearly as dramatic of a difference as you might see in a game like D&D, where the spread between armor class can be much more significant. This essentially means that wizards are very easy to hit, and warriors are slightly less very easy to hit. But what's the point of all this? What am I getting at? Well, in this version of the playtest, another change was also made, which is that all characters have 6 armor slots available. Regardless of class, everyone begins with 6 armor slots. Now, there are certain features like the Vengeance Guardian, which gets to immediately add an additional armor slot, but those are few and far between. 
Let's just assume that everyone is starting with 6 armor slots. As a quick reminder of how armor works, when an enemy rolls damage against you, you can mark as many armor slots off as you like and reduce the incoming damage by an amount equal to your armor score multiplied by how many slots you spend. For example, say an enemy deals 4 damage to you, you're wearing leather armor which has a score of 2. You can spend 2 armor slots to reduce the incoming damage by 4 and therefore take no damage. The way that armor, evasion, and damage thresholds function together in the game in its current state has the potential to create two parallel problems. They're separate, but also very related. The first issue is armor selection. I don't think that it would be unreasonable for a player to assume that the quote-unquote better armor is better. And by that I mean that armor with a higher score should always be better than armor with a lower score because the better armor comes with drawbacks to offset it. You're always paying the tax of using the higher score armor, so it should always be better as far as damage reduction is concerned. But because of how damage thresholds work and because of the existence of the damage cap, this is not always the case. I call this the better armor isn't always better issue. The second one is that because wizards, for example, but other squishy classes have this same issue too, have damage thresholds that are relatively low and closer together, this actually makes them proportionately more efficient at reducing low to middling damage and actually incentivizes them to wear heavy armor, which does feel like it runs counter to the fiction to some degree. At the same time, warriors are almost incentivized to wear lighter or medium armor in that same damage range. The reason for this is that due to the downsides that heavy armor comes with, it will disadvantage a warrior more than a wizard, and they will likely need to be spending the same amount of armor slots anyway. This issue does largely end by the time that damage exceeds a certain range though. But let's explore these issues in more detail. I think these are some important elements of the game's design that if left unchecked could undermine a lot of the main premise of the game, which is to be that you shouldn't have to think about a lot of these things. They also lend themselves to some strange interactions, and I just think they're important to discuss. For our example, we'll be using a warrior and the wizard for consistency, and we'll start off with the first issue. Better armor isn't always better. The warrior's damage thresholds are currently set at 1, 8, and 16. The design intent here feels clear. In order to take more damage, they need to be hit harder, and the large gap between damage thresholds means that in order to actually take less damage from an attack, it's likely that the warrior will either need to be wearing heavy armor or expend more armor slots. This makes sense. You would expect a warrior to be decked out in heavy armor and on the front lines just tanking damage. But then the question becomes, is this actually the case? Does the design intent match up with reality? And I'm not so confident that it does. If we take a look at this graph created by Alex from Exploring the Build, definitely check him out and drop us up to his channel, the link is in the description, we can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Looking at the chart, it's pretty clear to see that as incoming damage increases, the amount of armor slots needed to be expended to reduce the damage threshold by exactly one step also tends to increase linearly, and shows that while in a lot of cases you are better off wearing heavy armor like full plate from a damage reduction standpoint, there's also a lot of cases where breastplate is functionally identical to full plate, like we see when 13 damage is incoming. Similarly, chainmail performs identically to full plate at 10 and 11 damage, and then again at 13, 14, and 15. This awkward situation is what I mean when I say that it's strange that better armor isn't always better. The even more interesting thing to note here is that at 16 damage, there is something of a reset that occurs. This happens because this is where the warrior's severe damage threshold sits, and because the gap between it and the major threshold is so far that none of the basic armor choices are powerful enough to bridge that gap. It shows that at 16 and 17 damage, even just leather armor performs better or the same as full plate if we're talking about lowering damage by exactly one step. Heavier armor will generally perform better when trying to reduce damage by multiple steps, but even this isn't necessarily the case at some very specific amounts of incoming damage. What these graphs are showing us is that armor selection right now in the game is not nearly as straightforward and predictable as it might seem. Better armor is not always better, and that's a problem. This is where I feel that there's a bit of a disconnect between design intent and reality. If the player makes the decision to take heavy armor knowing the downsides that it has, that decision should be rewarded by providing consistently better damage reduction at all points in time, not just sometimes. Yes, once damage greatly exceeds the severe threshold, heavy armor will always be better, but as long as the damage sits in the middle-ish ranges, it isn't consistently better. 
As mentioned, the degree to which this is true will largely depend on the damage spread of the enemies in the game though. If things are consistently hitting for 25 or 30 damage, then yeah, warriors will absolutely be better off wearing heavy armor. But it should be obvious to a player what benefit they are getting for a choice that they are making. If choosing their technically better armor is only sometimes better than the worst option, that's a design miss that should be reevaluated. I've taken a look at the enemies provided in the text, and the average damage range for tier 0 creatures is around 6 to 12, tier 1 creatures is around 14 to 20, tier 2 creatures are around 18 to 26, and tier 3 creatures are hitting above 30 on average. These are just some rough estimates, and there are some outliers in each tier, but I think it provides a reasonable range of where you can expect creatures to be hitting. This to me highlights that the disparity in armor selection is likely to be very real, since for a large chunk of the game, average damage does seem to be hitting right in that sweet spot where things are a little bit murky. Another element that actually even further plays into this is one of the domain cards that warriors get access to from their bone domain. That being their third level card, Brace. Brace allows you, when you use an armor slot to reduce incoming damage, to spend any number of hope dice, and for each one that you spend, you can reduce your incoming damage by an amount equal to your proficiency bonus. This further restricts the utility of heavy armor, since you can easily match heavy armor scores while wearing medium or even light armor by using this feature. Which, by the way, is unlimited uses per day. It just requires you to have hope dice to spend, which, as we've discussed in previous videos, is really not that hard to come by. Before we get to the wizard, there's one last point that contributes to this kind of contradictory experience, and that is the existence of the damage cap. Since in Daggerheart, assuming you aren't using the optional massive damage rule, since, well, it, it's optional, you are capped at only being able to take 3 hit points in a single turn. This functionally means that even if you're taking a thousand damage from an enemy in one turn, it makes no difference since there is no armor in the game that can reduce it by enough to change threshold. This again just contributes to the heavy armor feeling like a bit of a missed design opportunity. Let's quickly talk about the wizard now because this same design has kind of caused the opposite problem. This is what I described earlier as wizards being more armor efficient than warriors. The wizard's design thresholds are currently set at 1, 5, and 10. Because they are so much closer together and lower, you end up actually being more incentivized to wear heavier armor because it will yield a proportionately better damage decrease for less armor slots spent. Again, looking at the graph by Alex from Exploring the Build, we can see that at 10 and 11 damage, we see the same issue mentioned earlier in that leather armor performs the same as full plate. But what's more noteworthy about this graph is that there is no reset like we saw in Warrior because their severe threshold is capped at 10. What this means is that as damage increases, heavy armor like chainmail or full plate is consistently better than light or medium armor. Now it is worth mentioning that this is essentially what the warrior graph would look like if we continue to grow it, but the point is just how early it happens in the game for wizards. This essentially shows us that wizards will be consistently better off picking heavy armor versus any other type as it's just so much more efficient from a damage reduction standpoint for them since their thresholds are so much closer together and even basic heavy armor can span the full gap. It's worth noting that a wizard opting to increase their major damage threshold on a level up is actually kind of disgusting and makes the heavy armor even more potent than it already is. One thing I've mentioned but haven't gone in depth about yet are the downsides for picking heavy armor, and that is a big part of the reason why I think typically squishy classes like wizard are better off going for heavy armor, whereas the typically tanky classes like warriors are better off picking up medium or light. The downside to picking a breastplate as your armor is the minus one penalty to agility. This to a wizard is basically inconsequential. As per their character sheet, agility is already the wizard's dump stat. The game recommends putting a minus one in it anyway, so the minus two you end up from wearing breastplate is really kinda trivial. This is especially true in a game like Daggerheart, where the player has so much more agency in the types of checks that their character will actually be making, so it can be easier for them to avoid. The same is even true of Chainmail. It gives a minus one to evasion, but honestly, a wizard starting evasion score is eight. Let's be real, if you're getting hit at eight, you're probably getting hit at a seven, so this functionally doesn't change that much for your character. You're probably better off taking Chainmail and having slightly more damage reduction. You could even stretch this same logic to full plate. The minus two to evasion does feel like it hurts, but again, considering how low your score is anyway, I'm not sure that it actually changes all that much. 
So while it doesn't feel like the penalties of wearing heavy armor affect the wizard all that much, they do impact the warrior more. Agility is a recommended plus one score for the class, and will have a larger impact on the character's functionality both in and out of combat, and how they can live up to their fantasy. One final note is that the rules state that players can essentially flavor their armor as they see fit. Full plate in this game doesn't have to look like typical full plate, which means that a wizard doesn't need to be walking around like a gladiator. But the issue is less to do with that, and more to do with the lack of clear reason to choose one over the other, but we'll discuss that in our next section. So with all that out of the way, let's talk solutions. This is a complicated issue to address since it seems like it's stemming from a design that actually makes logical sense. Strong and brawny warriors should be able to sustain more damage than something like a wizard. It makes sense that their damage thresholds would be farther apart, as this recognizes that each additional point of damage a warrior sustains is increasingly difficult to cause. I feel like the core fundamental cause of this problem are the existence of the damage thresholds and the damage cap. They are largely responsible for the issues that we've identified in the video, but I think there are a few solutions to work around them since I don't expect that they'll be removed from the game. So what can we do about it? My gut instinct was to take a look at the quantity of armor slots across the board. I'm not sure that every class should equally have six, but it's worth noting that some adjustments could actually serve to only exacerbate the issue. It might be tempting to lower the slots available to wizards and increase the slots for warriors, but just remember that giving wizards fewer armor slots further increases the value and the appeal of wearing heavy armor rather than light since you want the most bang for your buck. And similarly for warriors, if you have more slots to spend and play with, your light armor that reduces for less each time also becomes more worthwhile. That's why I don't think that this on its own is the solution, but it is probably part of it. One possible method of addressing the issue would be to take another pass at damage thresholds. If they are going to exist in the game, they shouldn't be creating unexpected results. This could take many different forms. Some possibilities include giving certain squishier characters an additional massive damage threshold where they can take four hit points in one turn. This can have other negative consequences though, and would essentially eliminate the massive damage variant rule that already exists. Alternatively, the inverse option of cutting a warrior's third threshold and instead setting their severe threshold to something like 10, which limits them to only two incoming damage. Again, I'm not confident that either of these are good solutions, I'm just spitballing some ideas. Another idea could be to actually revert to something that existed in Daggerheart 1.2 and was cut in 1.3. That being giving light armor a bonus, a reason to take it. In Daggerheart 1.2, leather armor actually granted a plus one bonus to your evasion. I'm not saying that that necessarily needs to be the bonus that it grants, but on its own, it can serve to be a reason why someone would take light armor over heavier medium. The other fairly obvious solution to this is to simply create requirements that a character needs to meet before they can wear certain types of armor. This is slightly trickier in Daggerheart as compared to something like Dungeons and Dragons, as there isn't a lot of granularity in the ability scores in this game. They could require a plus one in, say, strength or agility to be able to wear heavy armor of any kind. This would serve well to functionally limit which armor can be worn by certain types of characters. In that same regard, it might also be worthwhile to reevaluate the drawbacks that are associated with those certain types of armor to make sure that they are actually hitting their desired intent. Let me know what you think about this topic and Daggerheart in the comments below. I'll be covering many of the other updates with Playtest 1.3 in a future video, so stay tuned for that. Go support The Wandering Tavern on Kickstarter, and otherwise, take care.